The latest inflation data is out for the month of July, and I'm gonna show you how we can analyze this easily in Excel and make it easy to, to visualize the information to see the trending. So for starters, I'm gonna copy and paste this right into Excel. So selecting all the values, hitting Control C, back into Excel, Control V, and it's pasted in there. Now, a couple challenges here. One is that the headers are not aligned in the right uh, in the right field. So for example, January 2024, that's relating to these values here. The 12 month period is over here, but that's relating to these values. Another issue is that these headers are spread across multiple rows. It's not ideal, but it's not, not too difficult to fix. And I'm not gonna use any Visual Basic, any Power Query, just simple formulas to fix this. So because these labels are always gonna be in the same place, I can just link to those values. So select those values, and I'm just copy, copying my formula down. So it's a pretty standardized report, and so I don't need to do anything really complex with this. And I'm gonna copy it across, make sure I get all the values that I need as well. So the idea being, is I'm, I'm just gonna create another table, effectively, that I can, that I can use for, for my analysis. So I've got that. The key thing goes back to those headers. And this is, this is really just the trickiest part of, of cleaning up this data. So I can use the date value function. And how it works is we put in a text, text data in here, and it's gonna convert that into a number, into a date value that I can use. Now, what I'm gonna do is concatenate these two values. So I've got January, I've got the month, and I've got the year. So I'm gonna select January, and then I'm gonna use an ampersand, and, and then I'm gonna put just an empty space here, close that, um, with the with the uh, with the quotes, and then select the year. Now, initially, this is not going to work, and the reason being is because that January value contains a period. So, what I'm going to do is use the substitute function, which is going to replace one value and put in another value. So, my text is that value in A5. The old text, the text that I'm replacing, is going to be that period. So, I'm going to put that in quotes, and then the new text. Is just going to be two quotes because because that means I'm effectively replacing it with nothing. I'm getting rid of the period and putting nothing in that place. Close that out and continue with the rest of my concatenation. And now I've got a number value, but this is really a, a date value. So now I can change this format and go to more number formats. And if I go under custom, I can just type in three M's for the month and then Y, 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 three Y's for the year, and I've got January 2024, so easy enough. And I'm gonna copy this over as well for these other values. Um, for the 12 month period, you know, I can just manually enter 12 month, 12 month period. But the idea being is that, you know, we can transform this, this table that, you know, may, may not look very, um, very ideal for Excel purposes just because of the headers, but you know, using that date value function, we can easily convert that into a, a more usable and readable format that we can use now for, for data analysis. So now that we've got this, um, I can start to, to put this on a chart, but it's still not uh, ideal because the reason is there's, there's, there's a lot of fields on here, right? So I don't wanna put this all on a chart, on a line chart, just because it's gonna be really hard to track all those values. What I'm gonna do is create a named range for this. So let's say I'm gonna select these values and call them inflation categories. And so what I'm gonna do now is create drop down lists that are gonna to link to these values and, and be able to make my chart um, dynamic based on those selections. And so to do this, I'm not gonna create the normal drop down options that you create through the data validation because what I'm gonna do is use the developer tab and if you don't have this enabled, you can go to the Excel options and make sure that this um, um, this tab is, is visible. And so once you've got that developer tab enabled, you can go to the insert icon here and under form controls, there's an option here for a combo box. So I'm just gonna draw this out here and when I right click it, I can format the control and on my input range, I'm gonna reference my inflation categories. 
And what I'm gonna do is link it to a value right here. And so I'm gonna show you how this works. So the idea being that, you know, once I've clicked away from this and now I can select this, I have my dropdowns from my list here. So I can select all items and it's gonna tell me where it finds that value in that range, in that named range that I created. Now, currently just, just using a number is not gonna be terribly helpful, but what I can do is use the index function to say, okay, within that array of inflation categories, return that row number that relates to that. And so it tells me that it relates to all items, that, that item that I selected. So just to make sure that I'm referencing the, the right value. And now what I can do is link to link to my link to my values that I have here, set up the rest of my table here. So the idea being I'm gonna create a chart that's gonna look at January through to July. And I'm gonna use the index function now to, to figure out exactly what value I should be pulling in. So I'm using K to S as my range. And for the row number, I'm gonna use the match function to say, okay, look for this all items value within this column. And I'm looking for an exact match. And for the column, I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to do a match. I'm searching for January 2024 within this range. Now, the key thing to remember is make sure that your that your lookup is within that that index. I'm looking at K to S, so I want to make sure this is within K to S as well. I don't want to go outside of that because I'm going to get an error if I do. And then I'm going to look for an exact match type as well. So I'm going to close this all out. So for all items January 2024, it was 0.3. So that that works correctly. The next thing I'm gonna do is freeze the values. So I wanna sure, want to make sure that K to S stays the same. Column V is frozen, because that's where I've, I'm referencing my value here. And column K is also frozen, because that's what I'm doing my lookup. And then row six is frozen. And, and K should also be frozen as well, just because I don't want that to, to ever move. And so now I'm ready to copy my, my formula over. So we can see I've got the January through July data in here and it's pulling in the correct values. Now what I can do is repeat these steps. So I'm gonna copy this, uh, this dropdown that I created, put another one right there. And this time right click format control and I'm gonna link it to this value below, U8. And so the idea being, if I select food, that's gonna to link to two. And I should be able to copy these formulas down and making sure that they're referencing the, the correct values as well. And I'll copy it one more time. So if I right click copy and paste, and then right click format the control. And this time, instead of U8, referencing U9, and so on. And so now we've got all those formulas filled in. And obviously we could use more items if you wanted to, but the idea being, I want these dropdowns to be dynamic enough that it's easy to, to make changes and um, you know make it look seamless on my chart. Now, the reason I use these dropdowns is because they'll look better on my chart once I, once I set it up. So now that I've got those items, and obviously you can select more than three items if you wanted to, but I can select these values now and go on my insert tab and what I may want to do is now create a chart that shows these, these changes on a month over month basis. So we've got these values here. And so we've got my chart right here. So I've got my, my all items, my gasoline, my energy. So what I may just want to do now is, you know, set up my chart. So I'm just going to call it inflation and then adjust my, my axis so that my labels are, let's set it to high, so it's right there, so it's visible, so it's easy to see the month over month changes. And let's adjust my chart design just so I've got, uh, change my color, so perhaps a bit more gradual, different shades of blue based on um, the item that I'm looking at. So there's a couple ways we can look at the data, we can look at it, uh, 
on a month over month basis and having the different inflation categories as the legend, or we can change the chart type and flip it around where we've got um, we've got the months as the legends, and then we've got the different items, different categories showing up. So it depends on how you want your data to be displayed. But by setting it up this way, you know you've got a lot of control over how you how you visualize your data. You can see the changes a lot a lot more easily. Now the one thing I can do is also put the put these uh, drop downs over top of my of my chart. So for example, I pull this in. Now the one thing you'll notice, it hides behind this. And that's because I just need to adjust um, the layering. So I'm gonna send this to the back, my chart to the back. And now those items, those drop downs, are gonna sh show over top of it. So now it's gonna actually cover my title. So I may just wanna reposition this a little bit differently. But the idea being that I can drag these down here. So if I wanted to pull in these different items, I can do so like this. And in this case, I may just want to adjust my legend and then adjust it so that my legend is at the top. There we go. So that makes it a, a lot cleaner to, to look at and easier to see. So now my chart looks a lot more dynamic. I can adjust it. And, you know, we've got energy. We've got uh, new vehicles. It's a lot easier now to conceptualize this report and see this see this inflation data in an easier way to analyze. So I may just want to space this out a bit more. The one thing with these controls is it, it, to cleanly activate them, you want to right click and then grab and drag them. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit tricky because if you just click on it, Excel thinks you're making a selection. So if you right click, that'll select it and then it's easier to drag this around. And so by doing it this way, you know, you've got drop downs that are a little bit easier uh, to, um, to put within your chart as opposed to the built-in um, data validation that may not look as, as 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 nice or clean and so i'm just going to make this a bit a uh, bit cleaner so th those values look hidden so we could potentially also get rid of these these additional columns that that i've that i've set up here these sort of helper columns to analyze this and so now we've got a really easy report to, to see where we've got our starting uh starting report and now we've got our our chart, which you know we've basically hidden all the extra work that we've done. Um, let's turn off the grid line so it fills in, um, uh, blends in a bit more smoothly. And now it's a lot more easier to to analyze this inflation data just by you know, just by making these changes to our to our drop downs on here. And it's dynamic and it's easier to to analyze this without having to have you know, too many different items on our report. And it makes it a lot easier now to analyze the, the inflation data and putting into a report that is more easier to understand for, for yourself or for anyone who's who's reading it. So the key thing to remember is, you know, you don't have to overcomplicate when you're creating a report like this in Excel. Some Sometimes just simple steps like using formulas, using index and match can be enough to convert your data into a more usable a compact data set and then you know just filtering your report based on what exactly you want to see and by doing it that way it's a lot more versatile easy to use and even though the data set may not look like it's really excel friendly at first you can manipulate it and put it in a format that is easy to use the only limitation of this that I, that I set up right now is I didn't make it so that it adapts to um multiple periods beyond the beyond the current one so for example if we go into august september october i did not add enough columns for that but as you can see it's just a matter of just really expanding that that table and those formulas and making sure that um all those calculations are pointing to the same place but by using formulas you know it's really simple to just make this uh make this data set easy to read and and convert it into a into a table that you can easily put into a chart making it a lot easier to, to analyze that. So hope you found this video useful. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and leave a like. Thanks for watching.